praying and looking toward thee. O God, our Jesus, there is those other words. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. What a rich reward. What a rich harvest awaits us all. Help us, O Lord, to wait in contentment on thee because contentment is the spirit of summer. Contentment is the product of accepting both the negative and the positive in the field of God's will and labor. We pray today that thou might speak to our hearts. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Is it a hymn or is it the youth choir? Or what is the song? You were playing that when we came in. Thank you, Sally. Great is thy faithfulness. Praise God. Great is thy faithfulness. She was playing this when we walked in today. In the middle of the sermon, something happened to me that's happened to me in every sermon I preach to you on these windows. God has used me in a conversational tone of voice. Very seldom in these sermons have I really been, you know, used the fire in my voice like it happens sometimes. But in the middle of the sermon, like in creation, spring, in summer, and now in autumn, there was such inner delight. About the time you got out, there was such inner delight. Yes. But I, way, I felt that way last week. It was such, yeah, because summer, God really spoke to you. There was such inner delight and joy till I wanted to come down and say, folks, look at me. Can't you tell what's happening to me? Dear ones, can't you tell this not always in a loud voice that the joy is expressed? Right here it says sometimes silence is praise. This morning the anointing was so wonderful and God was working so preciously through this sermon till I wanted to alert you. I wanted to cry out. I wanted to get the gong and ring it. But he wouldn't let me do it. I'd think of it. He'd say no. And so I just have to tell you, I'm in a place of great joy. My sermon was spoken with joy this morning. The Lord touches my heart when Amen. I start to tell you something. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, Danny came down the helicopter the other day. Oh, yeah. Well, they didn't know where the church was. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So they were trying to find the find this during, church. During, uh, we received a telephone call through my mother and, and uh, Danny Oaks, this precious man of God over here with his precious wife. He had radioed in by telephone, air phone, through the man who was with him. His company was thinking about buying a a new type of helicopter, which is very nice, and said, we'll be there in 10 minutes. Mother calls in, said, there's a helicopter going to land with Danny Oaks in 10 minutes. I thought, great. <laughs> you, you never know what's going to drop out of the skies. <laughs> and so I tell you, we hurried out like eager little children. There we were all out there. And one of the Rita brought her class out. We wish we'd have had them all out. Brought her class out. I think all of them got to see him take off. And in came this beautiful helicopter. Yes, well, they were trying to find the building. I, I'm trying to get this right, Danny, but he told me over here a while ago that he seemed to see the light, even he saw the light in Hex, he saw the light over this church, and he said when they, there was a cloud cover, and they were trying to find it, and he said there was one spot in the sky where a shaft of light came through, and it hit the church, and he said that's how they found it. They found it by, by a beautiful shaft of light. He wanted me to tell you when I said, Pastor, it just pow, it just hit my heart like that. Do you think of that? They found it, found it they by found a beautiful it shaft of light. By the natural light of God yes. from the sun that shines yes. through the clouds. Only it was a spiritual yes. motivation I think so. as it is always. I just want to say by God's grace to Bob and Devon, the harvest is about due. You've persevered and you've wept. But for you, there is a promise that you and I know about. And I admire you for the tenacity of continuance. I admire you for the joy that you had, even through the devil fighting and some touches of awful hell, not by your own choice, but for whatever reason, I want to tell you there's a harvest due. And I don't believe it's far away. I would have had it come five years ago. I would have had, because God promised perfect healing for your lovely wife. God's promised more than that for you both and for your beautiful children. But dear ones, by God's grace, I have never doubted it since the promise came. No more, Nancy, God's promised that for your family. I would never let go of it. There's a harvest time, my friend, and it'll seem on that day like you're in a dream. 
Remember, my friend, the Word of God is true. And if each of you, each of you have been listening to the voice of God, see, He loves us all. There's a personal promise somewhere along the line. Don't you forget it. God's speaking to you. God's speaking to you. And it's true. It's true. It's true. Ask Him for it, nothing doubting. Because it's a man that wavers that doesn't get into the harvest time. God cannot work with that kind of doubt. I just wanted to express that to you right now. This is a great, great song. Great is our faithfulness. What number is it, Pastor? 35. Number 35. Let's sing it as we close with joy. The harvest time of our souls. has been committed, the mercy and the precious blood of Christ can wash all that out so that we need not, that we need not reap eternal punishment. There are always scars and results as a result of our sins. There are certain consequences, but the big consequences rule out. Furthermore, he diminishes the effect. You see, I just, it'd just be so better if we were all raised pure and would all respond how much better it would be for marriage and for children and for education and all that. 
but he rubs that out. He dealt on my heart in mercy here just a few minutes ago. And uh, pray with these, please, would you? And so I wanted you to know that, and then I wanted to speak personally to two or three other people that came on my heart. Joe, I don't know whether you thought about it. But while you're in my notes, Joe, there's a harvest due for you. How wonderful was the power of God that landed on the car one night with me and your mother as you laid claim to a precious soul. That is your own husband. That comes in the autumn. It comes in God's time. But it surely was a promise that we've never lost. And Betty, you know, God's already harvesting your family. Harvest has already started, but the harvest is not over. What God has said he will do, he will do. And the fruit's coming in. And how delicious is the taste thereof. The best is yet ahead. Thank God that you've not doubted in all the years. What would have happened if you'd have doubted on the ninth year? Because Papa was saved in the tenth. Harvest was in Florida as he made us return, taking you with us. And preached on a night when he wanted to hear us. And God brought him in. We'll enjoy some of the fruit of that harvest as he and mom come here to be with us. We want them, ushers, to set Papa and mom and the young Nazarene preacher uh, who's now a chaplain in the Air Force, um, Mark and Joy Donnelly. We want to be sure. Now, I'm not asking for many reserve seats, but I want them somewhere on the front seats. Mark and Joy and Popo. See, Popo can't see too well, so just stick him on the front, fellas. Mark that down somewhere. I've already promised him that. By God's wonderful grace, I was thinking of a harvest for you. Praise God. These two thoughts were on my mind. Praise the Lord. Is all hearts clear? I want to praise God for his faithfulness with you, Pam. Praise God. Son, I'd just like to say that I've dug potatoes, I've picked cotton, I've, uh, I've uh, baled hay and uh, done all of that on the you farm sure have, and Daddy. had uh, many harvests, but it seemed like there's been a great harvest this morning. <laughs> 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 to sit and, uh, and listen to your son preach and, and do such a wonderful job, oh, the anointing of the Holy Spirit and... Uh, and helping to feed our souls here. And uh, I, it, it has been a time of my life. Tears flooded my eyes. And I said, well, thank you, Jesus. All of, the, <clears throat> all of the things that we've ever gone through, it's been worth it just to come here to this service this morning and to hear the gospel brought through a heart of love and, and, and see the reception of it. I, I can tell you folk are enjoying it, and I believe God's got uh, more exciting things ahead of us. So uh, I know I'm somewhere over here in the, in the harvest time, and uh, I don't know how soon the winter will come, but uh, let come what may, whether we live or whether we die, I'm the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Next Sunday is Mother's Day, and I'm supposed to speak on winter. How in the world am I going to accomplish that? On a day so warm, I'm supposed to speak on winter. Well, we have to trust the Lord. But folks, as far as I'm concerned, every window, every sermon has been a miracle. Amen. Every sermon has been a miracle. Every sermon. Every sermon has been a miracle of God. Because these preacher men all know and lay preachers, lay preacher and layman, they all know that if somebody takes an assigned subject ahead of time, it can be one of the driest times ever trying to get anything together. And so we've trusted Jesus on the Beatitudes, and we've trusted him on the windows, and now four are accomplished, and there's one yet to go, and I'm rather excited about how am I going to talk on winter on Mother's Day. <laughs> But Jesus knows I may have a little insight as to how that's going to be accomplished. By God's grace, I'm trusting. Just thought I'd point that out. I want you to come back tonight. And one of the things that I want you to hear is 
a letter that Guy Young has from an artist in Michigan. It is so precious, Guy, I believe, by God's grace, unless God gives us a trouble burden, Stephen, unless that, that we might be able to share that tonight. A little time, like at announcement time, but you see, it's just so precious. I'd like for that to be shared. It's just, it's real insightful. If you want to know one, how one artist feels about us, opening up and loving them and, and getting ready to have a, ga a gallery in that nice hall that's just been finished with that rug, you're going to find out that this artist says that anyone that loves the work of an artist loves that artist. And if you don't love the work of the artist, you're not showing love for the artist. And then I remember the psychological principle that art is an extension of the personality. And you cannot cut off love for that personality at any given point. You have to love the whole personality. And so it's just real precious. That's just a little nugget, guy, that you read to me last night. And we're so thankful for that. Praise the Lord. I trust the youth choir be singing tonight. Is there something they can sing on their feet where they are, Sally? Yeah, I see. I've had them on my heart. Is there something they can sing on their feet right where they are? Well, I don't know whether this one has the witness or not. It doesn't seem to fit in my mind. See, when I think of them singing. So young people, is there anyone that you know of you can stand, sing while you're standing? <coughs> Oh, I've t oh my, oh Sally! I tell you what, we've got time enough to sit down and have a sing, and then we'll go home. Kids, come on up so you can sing from the loft up here. I just thought of a better way to close. Let it be the choral benediction. We'll all stand. In order that the audience may see, we'll be seated until I get up. But just the men, just the preacher.
and now receive a benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen.